Hello, and welcome to this module, Infant, Toddler, and Prenatal Oral Health Overview. This module is brought to you by Cavity Free at Three at the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment in partnership with the University of Colorado School of Dental Medicine. By the end of this module, you will be able to explain to your clients why baby teeth are important, what causes cavities, and how to prevent them, why and when a child should see a dentist, and how to take care of mom's teeth during pregnancy. Teeth are important because they have many jobs. Strong teeth allow kids to chew their food properly. For example, they help them to eat crunchy and nutritious fruits and vegetables. Healthy teeth play a role in a child's smile, social interactions, confidence, and self-esteem. Properly aligned and pain-free teeth help a child to speak. And healthy teeth lead to overall good health. Oral health problems can have an impact on a child's life. Young children often aren't able to put their tooth pain into words or to tell you that they have a cavity. If a cavity is left untreated, an infection can occur. Infections can become serious, and this may also lead to extensive and expensive dental treatment. Mouth pain from cavities can make it hard to get children the nutrients they need and, to, and may lead to nutritional deficiencies if the child is not able to properly chew their food. If a child is having tooth pain, it can greatly affect their ability to pay attention and learn in school. Children may also have a hard time when they try to focus and complete schoolwork. Tooth pain can lead to absences from child development programs like Head Start and from school. Decayed teeth can also interfere with the child's social interactions and affect their confidence and self-esteem. Baby teeth save space for the adult teeth and guide the adult teeth into the proper position. If a baby tooth is lost early due to tooth decay, the teeth next to it may move out of their proper place and become crooked. When teeth don't align properly, there is a higher tendency to develop speech problems. They also may have trouble sleeping and speaking. And disease in baby teeth may cause problems in the adult teeth. The best thing to do is to prevent cavities from forming because when cavities are not fixed, they can become so severe that the child has to go into the hospital and go under general anesthesia. On average, 3,000 children are admitted into the hospital to have surgery to fix all of their dental decay. This can be hard on the child and family, and it can be expensive. In addition to the cost of hospital admission, families have to deal with lost wages from time off of work, missed school, and travel expenses. The Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment performed a screening survey that showed that in one school year, 31% of kindergartners had cavities. From this data, we can see that we have to try to catch kids before kindergarten and before they have cavities, which means starting oral health care while they are young. Encourage parents to take their children to a dentist by the age of one year. If a child is older than one year and has never been to the dentist, encourage the mother or the caregiver to visit one as soon as possible. Even though tooth decay is preventable, it's common in children of all ages. All children can be at risk and there are many factors which contribute to how common tooth decay can be. Studies tell us that children from racial or ethnic populations have a higher rate of cavities. Children at schools with higher percentage of students eligible for free and reduced lunch programs have a higher rate of tooth decay than children at schools with a lower percentage of students eligible for free and reduced lunch programs. The data from this screening survey point to the health inequalities in communities of color and children living in poverty. Cavities can form when we have three things present, teeth, germs, and sugars. Usually, a child's first tooth erupt around the time that they are six months old, though it can be earlier or later. Germs. We all have them in our mouths. They're called Streptococcus mutans and Streptococcus sobrinus, among others. 
These germs can come from a parent, a caregiver, siblings, or even through daycare. When we drink sugary drinks or eat foods with a lot of sugar, the germs in our mouth use the sugar to make acid. This acid causes tooth decay because it slowly dissolves the protective outer layer of the teeth, called enamel, creating holes or cavities. Cavities get bigger and bigger until the dentist fixes them. If cavities are not treated by a dentist, they can sometimes cause serious infections. Teeth don't have to be white to be healthy. Healthy teeth should be uniform in color with a smooth surface and the gums should be pink and not red. White spots can be the first sign of decay. White spots may seem whiter than the rest of the tooth and are usually for first found near the child's gums. It's recommended that parents lift the child's lip and look for white spots once a month. There are many factors that go into tooth decay. Some factors include the mom or the primary caregiver's dental health, what the family does to keep their mouth healthy, the access to dental insurance, finding a dentist close to home, and drinking tap water, which contains tooth strengthening fluoride. What we choose to eat also impacts the health of our teeth. Constantly sipping juice from a sippy cup or grazing on sugary snacks all day will continuously bathe the teeth in sugar, which may cause cavities. If a parent notices white spots, refer the child to a dentist. White spots may become cavities without treatment. A brown or a black spot can be a cavity. A fluoride treatment may help stop the cavities from forming. There are many causes of cavities, but that also means there are many places to stop them from happening. Fluoride can help, but families should also work to decrease the bacteria in the child's mouth. Parents can do this by brushing the child's teeth, limiting germ sharing by doing things like not sharing toothbrushes, decreasing the amount of sugar sweetened drinks and sugar eating sugary snacks and visiting the dentist. But what else can the caregiver do? Only use formula or breast milk in bottles. Avoid giving baby a bottle in bed. Introduce the cup at six to nine months. Don't let the child carry around a bottle or a sippy cup. Offer only milk or water between meals. Have the family drink tap water. Fluoride is naturally occurring mineral present in water and food. The fluoride in tap water is safe and effective. If the family isn't comfortable with tap water, it's recommended that they look for nursery water that says that it contains fluoride on the label. The perfect time for parents to brush their child's teeth is as soon as the first tooth appears. Sit or stand behind the child and brush teeth for two minutes twice a day. Using a timer or singing a song can help the time go by quicker. Young children aren't able to brush well on their own. Adults should brush a child's teeth until age eight to remove the germs and sugar that cause cavities. Use a soft bristled brush and toothpaste with fluoride. Toothbrushes should be replaced when the bristles are worn out and bent. Germs that can cause cavities can spread between family members. To reduce the chance of that happening, family members shouldn't share a toothbrush or any items that go into the mouth. And children learn by watching the adults around them and will copy what they do. To keep a child's mouth healthy, adults should brush twice a day with a soft brush and floss every day. The first dental visit is recommended by one year of age or as soon as the first tooth comes in. The first visit often lasts 30 to 45 minutes and depending on the child's age, the visit may include an exam of the teeth, jaws, gums, and other areas of the mouth to check growth and development. As children get older, they should have dental checkups as often as the dentist advises. Most dentists recommend a dental visit every six months to help prevent cavities and other problems. Health First Colorado, also called Medicaid, covers all medically necessary dental treatments and services for children. Members are covered from birth through 20 years old. If a family needs to find a dentist, they can contact DentaQuest. 
DentaQuest is an organization that can help people enroll in Medicaid. These benefits include an exam, an x-ray, cleaning and fluoride treatments. And if a child needs other care, like to fix a cavity, that's also covered under Medicaid. It's important to take good care of mom's teeth and gums while pregnant. Because of pregnancy hormones, mom is more likely to have swollen and inflamed gums called gum disease or gingivitis. It is also thought that gum disease can lead to babies being born too early and too small. Getting a checkup during pregnancy is safe and important for a pregnant woman's dental health. Not only should expectant moms get routine care like cleanings, but they can also have procedures like having a cavity filled if needed. Only about half of the women in Colorado have their teeth cleaned during pregnancy. Encourage pregnant women to visit the dentist during pregnancy. A dental cleaning and x-rays are safe during pregnancy and will help keep mom's mouth healthy. Morning sickness exposes teeth to a large amount of stomach acid. This acid can damage or hurt mom's teeth. If a client is experiencing morning sickness, offer these tips. Wait to brush, don't brush after vomiting. Acid weakens the protective outer layer of teeth. So wait at least an hour after getting sick to brush. Rinse with water. While waiting for the right time to brush, it's a good idea for pregnant women to rinse out their mouths with water. Swishing water around in the mouth and spitting it out can remove a lot of the acid. Keep drinking water. Pregnant women are already drinking a lot of water, so keep on doing it. The more water you drink, the less acid will stick to her mouth. Brush your tongue. Don't forget to brush your tongue. After vomiting, you can successfully remove a lot of acid that would actually end up on your teeth. Colorado Medicaid also covers adults and ben with benefits up to $1,500 a year. The dental appointment can include an exam, preventive care, and like cleanings, and other treatment like fillings. CHP Plus is, a, is an insurance plan that pregnant women and children can enroll in based on income if they're not eligible for Health First Colorado's Medicaid program. CHP Plus coverage for women, pregnant women, and 60 days after childbirth. Thank you for watching our module. We hope that you've learned a lot about oral health. If you have any questions about the information in this module, please contact the Oral Health Unit at the Department of Public Health and Environment.